Hello. If we design several blocks inside a PL, you might know which block is the heart of the PL. Do you think you can tell me based on the hint here? Correct. Voltage control oscillator, VCO. Therefore, we might need to dive into which topology of the VCO we should use. Then, finally determine why we need a ring oscillator bus PO according to your application or usage. The first type is the ring bus oscillator, which consists of several gain stages in a loop, like a ring. Therefore, we may call the configuration a ring oscillator. The minimal number of stages could be only three to provide the positive feedback around the loop. Intuitively, what's the first advantage of the ring based oscillator? Right, area. If we design the simplest gain stage, what would you put there? Correct, inverter. So there are only three PMOS and three MOS devices at the three stage read oscillator. That's even much smaller than a bunch of digital logic gates. Since it could be like a digital gate, and the oscillation frequency may be related to the gate delay. Therefore, you might want to tune the read oscillator's oscillation frequency by tuning each stage's delay. What's the simplest way of tuning the gate delay? Yes, tuning the supply voltage of the digital gate would tune the delay easily. Intuitively, a higher supply will have a bigger overdrive on the PMOS and MOS for bigger charging and discharging strength, such that the delay is shorter than the lower supply. Therefore, the oscillation frequency inverse of the delay is proportional to the supply voltage. At this moment, you should know what another advantage of the read oscillator is, right? Bingo! Frequency tuning range can be much wider through the tuning supply voltage of each read stage. What's the good thing about the wide tuning range in a service or RNAs? Correct. In a service, there are a few generations in each protocol, like the PCIe or DisplayPort covers a very wide range of the line data rate. Then, the corresponding clock source must generate such a wide frequency range for the service to talk to different link partners dynamically from time to time. Okay, looks like the ring oscillator is compatible with the service in terms of the low area and wide frequency tuning range. Does the ring oscillator have other issues? Yes, the ring oscillator's noise is very poor and even very sensitive to the PVT conditions. Intuitively, the ring oscillator's output is rail to rail, so we don't care about the voltage loss at either the large one or large zero. But the oscillation output clock will transition from zero to one over one to zero. Any voltage noise will translate to the horizontal timing jitter. Therefore, it may be highly correlated to the device noise characteristic from the PVT condition. Again, tuning the supply of a ring oscillator is easy to get a very wide tuning range, but that also means the clock period over jitter is very sensitive to any supply noise ripple as well. We must careful 
filter out the supply noise to reduce the real oscillator supply noise introduced jitter. If the PLS jitter is very critical in a service link budget, what can we do to reduce the jitter? Bingo! We should not apply for the active device. Instead, we could apply an inductor L in pair with a capacitor C LC tank to get the oscillation frequency 1 over square root of LC. Ideally, in practice, either the inductor or the capacitors have the plastic resistive component, such that the oscillation may fail. Then, we must still apply the gain stage to compensate for the loss and make the oscillation sustainable. Even so, with a careful design, the LC based oscillator can achieve a very low phase noise compared to the green oscillator. Therefore, should we choose the LCPO for the low jitter and high speed service? If not, why not? Probably, you should ask yourself, how do you tune the clock frequency during switching to different generations of any protocol? Correct. The LCPO's oscillation frequency was determined by the LC value. Intuitively, we could either change the inductance or the capacitance of the LC tank. Unfortunately, changing the inductance is not easy without degrading the phase noise due to a low quality factor of the inductor. Similarly, we could add lots of capacitors bank with added switch or MOS vector to adjust the capacitance in the tank to adjust the frequency. But that's still a limitation to maintain the quality factor of the capacitors without degrading the phase noise too much or stopping the oscillation. So please be advised that the LCPL's oscillation frequency is very limited. No one can come with a single LC tank to cover the 4 to 1 frequency range. Not the are the oscillator easy? Not to mention, the inductor is quite bulky, occupying lots of area. So, what should we do? Of course, the ring oscillator's wide tuning range and low area is a must in a service. Then, we must choose the ring oscillator base PO for the service flexible application. But how do we resolve the jitter or phase noise issue from the ring oscillator based PO? Think about the VCO's noise contribution images for 5 seconds. Correct. From the Y Fractional NPO video, we've known the VCO is a high pass noise contribution to the PO's output jitter. Therefore, we may need to increase the PO bandwidth to filter out the ring oscillator's noise contribution, such that the whole PO's jitter can be minimized. To increase the PO bandwidth, we also know the reference clock rate must be increased to keep the PO stable. So, the higher reference rate will mitigate the ring oscillator's poor phase noise issue. Another intuitive way of thinking is to assume a good phase noise of the reference clock is available. Then, if the reference clock rate is higher, then the PL will keep luck to it more frequently and likely generate an output jitter close to the reference clock's input jitter. That may tell us why in a PCIe, the reference clock rate is 100 MHz, 
with a well-defined specification of its cheater as well. Likewise, the Ethernet reference clock rate is 156.25 MHz with a low jitter. The MOS 30s can still apply the ring of zeta bass PO to support the wide range of the data rate and low jitter specification at the same time. For most people, you may already know the trade off between two different types of theaters. Rain oscillator versus LC tank. The rain oscillator has a very wide frequency tuning range and small area, but it has very poor phase noise and poor supply noise regression. On the other hand, the LC tank VCO has an excellent phase noise, but his tuning range is very limited and has a very big area not only to meet different generations of any protocol, but also apply to a multi-protocol service. We must use the ring oscillator PO, such that the wide data array range can be supported. Six, the low jitter is a must in a high-speed service. A wide bandwidth to figure out the VCO jitter is a must. Then, the higher frequency reference clock rate and low phase noise or jitter should be provided. So, most standards like PCIe or Ethernet would define the reference clock rate at 100 MHz or 156.25 MHz in a low jitter specification, such that the whole ecosystem can follow easily. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from Rosaki images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.